Thank you, Jim. A pleasure to be here to talk about something new and improved. Something funny or interesting or confusing for many. We would like to reassess the subject, this little chapter in cardiology, because I think we are almost ready to make sense and create a mature culture in a field that has been confusing to many and possibly important, possibly mild and irrelevant. Let's see if we can start with an idea that comes from pathologists because they have the best pictures and comment on this a typical uh, autopsy of a patient that dies of uh, sudden cardiac death and has uh, an unusual amount of trabeculation around the apex, but obviously also hypertrophy of the heart, 15 versus 6 at this point. And this is what uh, in clinical grounds we call non-compaction. The pathologists tend to uh, disregard the, the <coughs> trabeculation. They say they are ir irrelevant most of the time. But this is the, the question that we want to address today. And we want to touch the subject from several different uh, sources. Uh, one is uh, the main source that brought me and our group interested in this field. It is the uh, what Dr. Willison was mentioning, the screen to prevent study or the uh, screening of several kids in a study of a large population in Houston. They came up with the, an incredible uh, uh, prevalence of this condition in the general population. They will talk about embryology because this is obviously something that is decided during an abnormal behavior <laughs> in uh, embryos. Then we'll talk about comparative anatomy. Many animals live with the hypertrabecular heart. And we'll see how frequent it is, and how it affects their lives. Finally, we'll talk to uh, the subject of uh, the spectrum of presentations <laughs> as seen from the pathology uh, point of view. I have been working, and Dr. Max Bouye is here with a pathologist here trying to see several different issues in the autopsies, and uh, when we discuss the incidence of non-compaction in autopsies, I was told that, uh, no, we don't really have a name for that, nor a, a criteria to identify and uh, it doesn't look to be so important uh, at this point. Let's see if we can improve that uh, uh, background uh, uh, culture on this subject. We will come to uh, describe in more uh, detail what we call the, the garden variety of non-compaction left ventricle, and we'll differentiate it from non-compaction cardiomyopathy. We'll talk in uh, uh, detail of the findings of the MRI uh, study showing the spectrum of forms. And finally, uh, some uh, uh, elaboration of the possibility of uh, evolution of a non-compaction congenital condition into a cardiomyopathy because of what we do in life, not only because of growth, but because of exercise, aggressive exercise. First, uh, the data from this uh, study of ours, 5,243 uh, students in the middle uh, school, basically, but uh, uh, age uh, 11 to 19 years of age. A group of uh, uh, people that were tendentially asymptomatic and involved uh, in uh, sports at the very early stage. 70 people were found to have high-risk cardiovascular conditions, 1.3%. And uh, out of this uh, uh, condition that we don't want to describe at this time, 
We found uh, 992 patients, 18.73% for the whole group. They had non-compactual left ventricle by the criteria we'll uh, uh, discuss here. The prevalence uh, uh, of uh, non-compaction is established by the Peterson criteria. Peterson in uh, radiology with MRI has uh, uh, proposed and uh, widely this is the standard for definition of non-compaction that the heart has non-compaction to compaction ratio of more than 2.3 is uh, to one is uh, a non-compaction uh, left ventricle. Cardiomyopathy is still debatable. By echo, this is different. It's more than 2.0 in end systole, while this is end diastole. This makes a lot of difference, obviously. And the frequency, uh, uh, the frequency of uh, a non-compaction in the cat lab, until recently, I don't know if there is any large uh, a statement at this regard on prevalence, but in the echo labs, they say that 0.14 or 0.1 percent of the uh, echoes have non compaction. Non compaction uh, criteria will tell us that the majority of our um, um, uh, patients or candidates for sports have uh, more than 40% ejection fraction, 100%. No one has severe cardiomyopathy. But mild cardiomyopathy is seen in 10% of these kids. It's interesting that of our patient, our candidates, uh, 3,200 or 60% reported working out more than six hours a week with the equivalent of running. Let's see what embryology can tell us. Embryology is obviously where the action is and where the problem starts. Initially, during the first week, the heart is a straight tube and is uh, composed in its wall by a monolayer of myocytes inside the cardiac jelly. In the inside of the heart, there is an endothelium that has an origin from the bone marrow and uh, the external wall of the heart is naked at this time. It's only later on during the first month of life, the proepicardial organ, a group of cells coming from the south of the border, uh, below the diaphragm, from Mexico probably, from the liver, from the liver, uh, they bring the blood, uh, the cells, the population of cells that eventually will form the basic structures of the coronary arteries. Eventually, from a single layer of my myocytes, the heart develops a thicker and gradually more obvious, especially at the level of the apices of the heart, uh, trabeculations that develop from the original myocytes. At the end of the first month, uh, a dramatic event occurs in the the life of a human embryo, which is the closure of the septum between the aortic and pulmonary artery and the formation of the aortic valve. That valve is essential for the development of coronary arteries of proper function because a high diastolic pressure is the condition to have a diastolic predominantly blood flow to the myocardium. At the same time, the ventricular septa uh, structure is completed in the coronary arteries. They were in the subepicardium as cells form some channels and eventually touch the aortic sinuses and start the circulation. Let's see in a section of the heart. Uh, this is a, a, a drawing coming from the website of somebody this is the only notion that I have of the origin. The thickening of the heart tube brings the heart to have pouches of the prospective right ventricle and left ventricle with a thick myocardium, compact myocardium outside, 
and trabecular heart uh, with opening into the main cavities in the upper portion. It is normal for the embryo to have more than two to one, usually it's five to one ratio between non-compaction and compaction. So this is a embryologic uh, uh, um, non-compaction. If you make a, a cut a few millimeters from the apex, you see a lot of uh, uh, trabeculations. They have myocytes, but no function of myocardium. The ventricular septum starts composing. There is a very thick layer of cells, the proepicardium, they form the coronary arteries. But in a few days, you see something so tremendously different in the structure of the myocardium of the left ventricle, but also the right ventricle, where the outside uh, little layer of uh, compact muscle is now added as a continuous, continuous space, muscle with a great number of uh, intermuscular spaces. They are covered by uh, endothelium. It is very likely, but it was never de demonstrated, that this is the way the intramyocardial mm, uh, coronary arteries, septals, and not are formed. <coughs> Eventually, the myocardial trabeculae disappear gradually and almost totally in human to leave some 10% of the space occupied by this, but the majority of the heart is compacted and with myocardial vessels, and it is impossible for the heart to form back the non-compaction. There are several papers in the literature saying appearance and disappearance of non-compaction in adults. Don't believe a, a single word of that. In animals, it's interesting to see that many animals live with non-compaction hearts. Uh, this is a, a study recently published by Jensen and Associates in uh, Amsterdam. It shows that uh, warm blood uh, animals may have or may not have in adult uh, heart uh, trabeculations, but many, especially in the lower cold blood uh, animals, have trabeculation in the adult stage. And they seem to be working very well, including uh, elephants, giraffe, pigs, with some level of trabeculations. They describe uh, trabeculations as abnormal, uh, hypertrabecular being this one, by designing a sort of a border between the space between the trabecula and the papillary muscles and the um, thick, uh, compact myocardium. They decide that 35% or more defines uh, non hypertrabeculated or non-compacted hearts. Just uh, a few examples. This is the uh, full spectrum of uh, patterns of myocardium. Pigs have no trabeculations at all. Humans have some trabeculations, the normal is about uh, 15 to 20 percent of uh, the space uh, occupied by trabecular. Uh, <coughs> mouse, uh, which is uh, an animal frequently used for experimental embryology, has some trabeculations. But sharks, for example, have mainly trabeculated hearts, have coronary arteries only in the alpha tract. And by the way, this is continuous pressure, is post the branchial system uh, blood flow. So it's a very inefficient way. If you want to run away from a shark, swim very fast for the first 100 meters, it will give up. My prediction is. This is a, a comparison between human and other animals, but basically in the more dramatic uh, case in chicken, before the separation of aorta pulmonary artery, the appearance of the coronary arteries, the 80% of the space inside the heart, this is the point uh, described by uh, MRI, is uh, trabeculated. At the end of hatching, 
the muscle is compact pretty much all over. Uh, experimental embryology has been very interesting in uh, uh, trying to reproduce in animals the non-compaction, studying the mechanism mm -hmm. by which uh, a poor development uh, eventually uh, develops into a, a definitive uh, mature heart non-compaction. The majority of the studies affected the uh, activation of the NOT system. The NOT system is an organizing system of uh, uh, local um, growth factor, factors. They are activated by uh, um, molecules like MIB1. S silencing these uh, activators, the heart develops uh, non-compaction. This is a molecule that is uh, a mutation in uh, several families with non-compaction cardiomyopathy in humans. So it's a very interesting model that uh, was tested with four different kind of uh, experiments. To give you an idea, this is the normal wild type uh, mouse <coughs> control, and this is the uh, non-compacted uh, left ventricular uh, results of uh, inducing a bad mutation. As you see, this is a heart that is quite different than this. This is the, uh, this section of the heart. This one is this section of the heart. This is organizing compact myocardium on top of the pre-existent uh, compact myocardium, and it has this structure that again suggests that the intertrabecular spaces eventually gives vessels, intermyocardial vessels. That this is a correct uh, definition of non-compaction and comparable to the human is shown by these pictures. This is the wild animal and this is the animal treated with this uh, MIIB1 uh, uh, mutation. Obviously is very similar to what we see in human. To give an idea of the organization in space of uh, the non-compaction uh, trabeculae, you will see with high definition electron microscopy, the non-compact non myocardium and the compact myocardium in such a detail that doesn't leave any doubt that these are not functional segments of the heart as pumping uh, organ. This is not a functioning myocardium. This is more what uh, Dr. Uribe uh, represented with the name of uh, La Barbita. It's a decoration, it's not structural muscle. Conclusion, embryologically, early trabeculations are present in every human embryo and many, but all animals' embryos. Then compact muscle in human is the norm and uh, highly trabeculated hearts may or may not function normally in different uh, animal species. Let's see what uh, pathologists uh, have seen. There are three mentions here of uh, uh, important uh, uh, pathologists that showed a typical example of non-compaction. This is Bill Roberts with the heart that we don't know by the history, but apparently is a an early adult age uh, death or explanted, uh, explanted without coronary disease, severe cardiomyopathy. And uh, you see how complicated is uh, the mesh of uh, uh, trabecular tissue at different level. It gradually comes down to cover most of the periapical territory. Talking about the spread of uh, uh, possible manifestation of compaction, this is a, a fairly frequent, but usually irrelevant or asymptomatic uh, case of a localized uh, uh, non-compaction where the mild trabecular, uh, hypertrabecular uh, mesh up here is accompanied by a deep penetration of intertrabecular spaces 
the, goes to a, a minimal thickness of the compound myocardium at this point. Uh, there's a little bulging here. We never saw in the literature described an aneurysm from this, in part because probably the non-trabeculations of this uh, uh, band of uh, uh, fibrous tissue or muscle protect uh, from uh, expansion because this is a very solid uh, part of the structure. If not uh, able to contract, is able to prevent dilatation. This is what we call the garden variety. This is in a paper by Argustini, uh, an Italian pathologist in Pavia, where she uses the same criteria that we use in the cardiac MRI, a more than 2.3 to 1 thickness of the non-compact versus compact myocardium, and uh, a pretty preserved uh, leventricular uh, function and, uh, and size. If uh, we try to um, place in terms of frequency and in terms of uh, uh, the number of uh, non-compaction in human, the garden variety, isolated and non-compaction, uh, is a, a great uh, spread of uh, thickness of uh, the non-compaction ratio and uh, can go from one to five. One is pretty much normal. Five is uh, uh, the most extreme case of uh, development of uh, hypertrabecular space. The standard is now to add more than 2.3 to one, and this is about 97% of uh, the total number of non-compaction uh, left ventricle. The localized kind is very rare. The proliferative kind, kind that we'll show you in the next uh, slides is also very rare. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy with no compaction implies different genes with all probability, but we're not sure that exercise can also lead to the same uh, condition. Different than the isolated uh, non compaction of the ventricle is uh, the uh, rare. Uh, 1% or slightly more of non-compaction associated with neuromuscular dystrophy, <coughs> congenital heart diseases. Interesting that the most frequent congenital heart disease in uh, human uh, with non-compaction is Epstein malformation, a typical disease caused by a poor uh, elaboration of the compact uh, and non-compact uh, layers. Uh, also, in hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, we have seen cases of no compaction. This is uh, the uh, anatomic idea of uh, a case A hypertrophic non compaction, very thick uh, cells. Uh, not clear if this is related to exercise or a different genes that promote uh, thickening of this tissue, but definitely always with a very regular. Uh, shapes and most likely this is non-functional myocardium, but nobody knows exactly what happens there. If there is ischemia, is also a question. But at this level of uh, hy hyper development of uh, 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 proliferation of non-compaction um, bands, this is bilateral. This is only left ventricular. This is what we call the proliferative of hypertrophic and restrictive cardiomyopathy. Only transplant can take care of these cases, and these are extremely rare. In the literature, there are only two cases of sudden cardiac death uh, accompanying pretty innocent uh, non-compaction left ventricle. Uh, it is not clear how serious is this problem of arrhythmias. The impression that we are studying now with Ana Maria is uh, that the Purkinje system doesn't reach the edges of uh, this tissue that is muscular but is not probably functional and is very slow in activation. Potentially there is a background for reentry phenomenon, but is not very well 
treated. In the literature, several times it has been reported that it's difficult to pace uh, these patients because the myocardium uh, touching, uh, touched by the electrode is not communicating with the rest of the myocardium. This is a fibrolastosis of the left ventricle. In our experience, uh, some facts that they are very important is, uh, in this case, the thickness of a non-compacted, uh, the ratio between non-compaction and compaction is an easy simplification of a description that is more complex. If you look here, the thickness of the uh, trabeculations in millimeters, it can go up to 16 or 1.6 centimeters and the average is nine millimeters. So there is a large spread. If you look at the compact myocardium, and this is the most important part in describing the functional result of non-compaction uh, left ventricle, the thickness of the compact myocardium can be as low as less than two millimeters the most frequent is between two and three, uh, but there are some that have very uh, uh, large, uh, almost normal Leventugal compact. This is uh, where it uh, applies. Uh, the Peterson criteria, um, 2.3 to 1, is really able to identify most of the cases of non compaction, very few have la barbita, these uh, trabeculations, they are excessive, but uh, uh, it's rare. 17 cases of uh, 600 cases that were uh, studied by short axis MRI. The great majority have a variable level of uh, uh, ratio, but definitely above 2.3 to 1. Here, very important is uh, the ejection fraction. At the end, what you measure is the function of the heart as a pump to see the relevance uh, clinically of this anomaly of structure. And this is comparing in black, uh, race, uh, uh, Hispanic, white, and others. We have a pretty large uh, spread of uh, um, the population in our study but all of the uh, kids uh, had a pretty normal uh, mean uh, leventricular ejection fraction in the range of 61%. In this period, 11 to 19, or in this the, um, a slide is only 11 to 16, we see that there is a major development of the leventricular mass. The leventricular mass in these four years of life, increases by 30%. And it is uh, where the heart responds the most uh, to overload, diastolic or systolic overload, and eventually develop into myocardiopathies. They may or may not disappear. The presence of non-compaction cardiomyopathy, non-compaction left ventricle is not clear, but probably affects especially the, the probability of occurring in the form of uh, uh, cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy. I want to show you very dramatic pictures in motion by MRI that shows you the function of the non-compaction. You see, non-compaction stays there inside the contract, contraction of the compact myocardium. The intertabecular spaces decrease and the space in systole decreases in the non-compaction area, but there is no active motion of the wall because of the uh, motion of the trabeculae. This is another projection in the Leventica Offload Tract view. Very clearly, these are bystanders. The, the work is done by the compact myocardium. This case had a, a sudden onset of congestive heart failure and shock. He was very sick. He was published eventually with a different name, but the initial author opinion was that this was a case of, of appearance in an adult 
of dilated uh, cardiomyopathy because of non-compaction. In reality, by echo, that was the idea by MRI that I asked uh, insistently to show uh, there was not a compact myocardium, a normal myocardium, but uh, still a thin uh, compact and a lot of non-compaction uh, bands. <coughs> the improvement was obvious, but there is no appearance in adult of non-compaction. This is a, an athlete, a very active, uh, more than six hours a week of exercise athlete, they had this as a routine, not because of any symptoms. The leventricular free wall had a, a diastolic uh, thickness of 2.8, but in systole, this is typical of athletes, the, inc the thickness increases dramatically, is not the typical case. And it seems like uh, exercise is good for this heart. But this is a very uh, typical non-compaction left ventricle with uh, this type of numbers. Another observation comparing MRI and uh, CAT scan angiography, the anatomy of the left ventricle is much better studied in detail by CAT scan angiography. But it is important to take pictures in endiastole and then systole, not enough to take it only in end systole. And it will show you not only the thickness of the wall much better than uh, MRI, but especially the subtle, subtle change in the construction of the papillary muscles. Papillary muscle in non-compaction left ventricle are not implanted over the free wall of the left ventricle, but on the non-compaction layers, on the trabeculae. And it's interesting, and it's patognomonic, is a sign of uh, non-compaction. So what is the function of non-compaction of ventricle? The uh, non-compaction segment of the heart is variable in uh, amount. Uh, it's 25 to 50 percent of the left ventricular and diastolic volume and uh, also uh, up to 50 percent of the circumference of the left ventricular profile. It is consistently incapable of structurally contributed to contributing to the left ventricular systolic action, the ejection. The trabeculae are weak, are spa spatially disorganized. The blood in the intertrabecular spaces mm -hmm. is compressed from the outside compact myocardium, but is not in itself contracting to move the, the wall of the left ventricle. It may be that uh, the non-compaction, especially in the adult, uh, where there is a, a fibroelastosis of the upper part of the non-compaction, there is an action of uh, a fairly favorable nature, whereby the expansion of the heart that you would uh, expect with a thinning of the compact myocardium is prevented because this muscle may work as cordae. It's still too early, but we're going to know very quickly by pathologists if or not there are Purkinje fibers in the um, uh, trabeculation, hypertrabecular spaces. And if or not uh, the EKG is normal or abnormal in uh, no compaction left ventricle is now perfectly clear. Dr. Lopez has reviewed pretty much everything we needed to see. There is no increase in uh, uh, intraventricular conduction defects. It is not uh, left ventricular hypertrophy. It is not right ventricular hypertrophy. There are no bundle branch block typical of this condition. A no T way inversion that has sometimes reported but is related to athlete's heart or additional uh, mutations. Complications of uh, non-compaction left ventricle, very rare in the isolated left ventricle that basically should not be called uh, in itself uh, uh, cardiomyopathy, but it may become cardiomyopathy and most of the time it will be because of additional mutations 
that we need to understand. Arrhythmias, it's difficult to see. We never saw in this 5,000 uh, people, or especially in the 982 that had the non-compaction, a single PVC, but I'm not sure about that data. We need to do halter and treadmills, and I think of Dr. Uh, Willison is an expert on this. He has seen some uh, athletes and uh, is pretty reassured by the lack of significant uh, arrhythmias with maximum exertion. Aneurysm is never. Dilated cardiomyopathy increases steadily in our population, doubles between the less than 14 and more than 15 years of age. So there is a tendency that needs to be monitored. Potentially clinical consequence is very interesting to mention to a clinical uh, audience. The fact that there is a thin myocardium means that uh, there is a, like a scar by leventricular myocardial scintigraphy. So a positive stress test, uh, nuclear stress test, is to be expected in many of these 982 kids that go or adult they remain with non-compaction with thin myocardium. The straight pattern is something that Juan Carlos is going to study with us, hopefully, and we'll see also if late gadolinium enhancement that was reported recently as a, a sign of non-compaction is really ischemia or scar or just a different amount of muscle that may or may not behave like a, a functional muscle in this context. The association with genetic mutation needs to be studied specifically, and this is for AJ, uh, in people that don't have cardiomyopathies. There should be a typical mutation, probably many less than what was uh, uh, suggested by the experimental pathology uh, um, in embryos. Uh, suggestion, 19% that have normal uh, left ventricular function should have some genetic mutation. They are probably different than the ones that come to the observation of the doctor because of congestive failure. So all this needs to be studied, but in conclusion, in my mind at least, uh, in human non-compaction left ventricle is generally a frequent anomaly of the left ventricular architecture not intrinsically a cause of dilated cardiomyopathy. Occasionally, it may be complicated by cardiomyopathy, most likely by additional mutation associated with it. Strenuous exertion, especially pressure-related, may induce progressive dilatation of the ventricle that is thinner than normal in the uh, free wall. And this is pretty much uh, the a uh, group of uh, enthusiastic collaborators that help with this, both radiologists, administrators, and uh, a lot of fellows. Thank you very much. <laughs>